Hey guys, it's Lenny Blake with Refine Horizons, and this is another video in the set of videos I'm doing about how we write uh, notes for our boundary maps. Could be a record of survey or a land title survey or a parcel map. So in the previous couple of videos, uh, I just kind of walked through the structure of the different type of notes uh, that we put on, four, four of the notes that we put on, four types. Uh, but in, it, I wanted to do some videos that actually show you how I write uh, some of those notes with an example. So, and I typically do that in a Word document, which I have pulled up here, uh, so I can get some spelling and grammar checking on the notes, and then usually my survey text will, will copy the notes from Word into the actual map drawing in uh, in CAD. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and pull this up. We'll take a look at uh, the actual survey here. So uh, this is the parcel that we surveyed. It's actually two parcels. Uh, this is a um, on the edge of a little town in the Central Valley. And uh, so this is fairly rural. Um, it has not been surveyed ever in its current configuration. And uh, we had a developer that was looking at this, was, was considering developing this lot. And uh, he ended up not following through with the development. So we didn't get to fully resolve this, this parcel, but I did provide some preliminary line work in, in California. Um, if you do that for a survey that isn't for a parcel that isn't on a filed survey already, then you have to file a record of survey. That's one of our rules in, in the state. So uh, we're working on that record of survey. So what I what I have here is the line work, and then I just went ahead just to make things simple, and I dropped in the labels for our property corners and also for our monuments. Sorry, I just realized this one's rotated. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through this drawing and we're gonna write the, uh, the monument notes and I will probably do a separate video for the, um, the property corner notes. And I think I'm going to work through all four types of notes that we covered in the first couple videos on this example survey here so you guys can see how we do that. Okay, so I typically like to write these notes in order, um, so you're going to want to know the order. And this was just kind of a weird survey. Uh, we had some of our, uh, some usually our monument notes are, uh, in, I mean our monument point numbers are in the 500 series um, but we had a couple weird things happen on this survey um, and so some of the numbers aren't in the 500 series but that's okay um, uh, we're still gonna make this work so the the lowest point number I have is uh, M311 um, and so we found some centerline monuments here in a subdivision uh, that we used to establish this north line of our northerly subject parcel, so this line right here. So we found these four center line monuments. Um, I actually looked for all the monuments along this backside, um, all the lot corners, and didn't find any of them, and I looked for every single one. Um, and that happens sometimes. Uh, they either don't get set, or they get blown out uh, when the subdivision gets built. Um, but I didn't find any, so we ended up using the uh, whoop, we ended up using the centerline monuments. Um, to establish that line. So we want to write some descriptions now uh, for M311, M12, M13, and M14. Now this is a good example. Uh, this survey is going to give us lots of good examples, but Normally when I find monuments from the same map with the same description, I, I, I will group those together so they don't all need an individual note. In this case, they phase this subdivision and these two monuments are on one phase and these two are on another, so I have to break that up. Okay, but let's let's look at those notes and I'm, I don't I already typed them ahead of time, so you guys don't have to wait for me to do that. So here's the first note, M311 and M312. I found, so again, I like to speak in the first person on my notes. I found three quarter inch inside diameter iron pipes tagged to PLS 7789 and monument wells. Okay, so that's what we found. That's the first element. These monuments are shown as three quarter inch inside diameter iron pipes tagged PLS 7789 on, and then I give the map reference. This will actually change to an R number, R2 or R12, R5, whatever, <clears throat> once I get a little farther along with the map. So I say what the record description was and the source of the record. Description. Those are the other two, two more of the elements of this note, and then I say, did I, did I accept it? So I said yes. I accepted these monuments as marking the center line corners on uh, that map. I'm actually going to add right away, right away center line. 
so people know what I'm talking about, because you can have different kinds of center lines. Okay, and M, the note for M13 and M14 reads exactly the same. Okay, only uh, the map is different. Um, it's on the next phase, so it's got a different subdivision map. Okay, but the notes, we found the same thing, and the record description was the same, and I accepted them. Okay, so those are probably the easiest notes in, in the survey here is these four. Okay, so the next monument we found uh, by number is 522. So we got to go find that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so over on, this is a quarter corner, and this is a, um, a, a quarter corner. And actually, you know what? This, I can't remember. Yeah. Like, see, this, this is a quarter. This might be center section right here. <clears throat> um, and I found a one-inch iron pipe. Uh, I had to chip it out of the pavement. It was six inches out of the pavement. But when I located a couple other monuments on this survey here that, that set this monument, I found the monument was out five and a half feet, and the record description didn't match. So I found a one-inch iron pipe, and this map shows a two-and-a-half-inch iron pipe. Um, so I don't think I found the, mo the actual monument that's marking the corner. I looked all over here at this intersection. And uh, there's no other maps that show this one-inch iron pipe. So I don't know what happened here. I don't have a good explanation. Uh, but I didn't hold this. And it wasn't critical for my survey. But in California, if you find a monument, you're supposed to put it on your survey. That's the law. So I've got a description there for that, a note. So let's, uh, let's paste that in. And you, can see, you guys can see what I wrote. So it said, I found a one inch diameter iron pipe with no cap or tag. So you always want to say if you don't find a cap or tag. Uh, the monument was found six inches below the paved surface. Okay, so that's what I found. That's the first element of the monument note. Then I say it was located approximately 5.5 feet from the record location of the intersection of Prince Road right away center line and the north line of lot 12, as shown on that map. Okay, so I said, hey, I didn't find it at the right location. And then I also say, hey, I didn't find a monument at the actual intersection point, what I think was the actual actual intersection point. Now you could do that in a separate PC note, uh, but in this case I, 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 it was I thought it was appropriate to combine them. Okay, then I, then I, I have to let you know, all right, uh, did I accept it or reject it? So I said, this monument was not accepted as marking the intersection point. Okay, and then I said the record description of the monument on that map was a two and a half inch iron pipe and actually to be consistent we should move this up. So I'm going to say the record description of the monument okay. and I say this monument was not accepted as marking the intersection point. I rejected the monument because I found it over five feet out of position and the monument didn't match the record description. So I don't think I found the right monument. Okay, I, I don't think I found the two and a half inch diameter pipe. Um, that's the only monument I could find in the intersection. But now, some it it's obvious to me that some surveyor set that monument, but I don't know what they were doing because <laughs> there's no map. So there you go. Now this note's a little longer because I rejected a monument, right? If you remember from the earlier videos, I really I try really hard not to do that. This is a rare case where I did that. I don't have a record. The monument doesn't match the description of the monument I was looking for, and I found it out of place. In other words, it doesn't agree with, with two or three other monuments uh, that I found during my survey. All right, the next up is uh, Monument 523, and that one is also a little bit special. So uh, let me drop that in here, and then we can talk about it. So um, M523 I found uh, over here. So it's right here, and it's actually uh, not shown on any map that I could find, but I found it at a property corner location. So there's a parcel map here that we tied down. It's right at the corner. Um, now, there is some weird highway stuff going on here with Caltrans, and four by four, a four inch by four inch concrete monument is a typical Caltrans monument, but I have the Caltrans highway maps, and uh, I can't find that monument on the map. So. First thing we do is tell them what we found. Found a four inch by four inch concrete monument. Where did we find it? At the southwest corner of lot 25. This is a lot as shown on that map. The monument has no cap or tag. So that's what we found. Then I say, what was in the record? Monument was not a record. Okay, but then I say, I accepted it. I accepted the monument, right? So 
I'm going to go ahead and hold that monument. It, it fit the record position, and I'm pretty sure it was set by Caltrans, even though that's not in the record. Okay. All right. Next up is <clears throat> Monument 550. All right. So let's go see where Monument 550 is. Okay, so Monument 550 is here at the intersection of Jensen Road, and this is called South Avenue, and it's also the a quarter corner common is section seven and eight. And uh, we found a monument there. So I'm gonna say in 550. So what did we find? I found a one and a half inch pipe at the surface of the pavement. Monument had no cap or tag. What was the record? The monument shown as a one and a half inch iron pipe on this parcel map. Did I accept it or reject it? I accepted this monument as marking the center line, center line intersection of those two roads. And I also accepted the monument as marking the one quarter corner section of common seven and eight. Okay, now, if this were a more rural survey, I might try and reference the original GLO notes or GLO maps, uh, but this monument has been in for a long, long time and everybody's accepted it. So I'm not gonna put a note in here trying to tie that monument back to the GLO survey. I probably couldn't do that even if I wanted to based on what I found in the record. But depending on the type of survey, survey you're doing, um, it is good to make that tie back to the general land office records or BLM records. Okay. All right. Okay, next monument we found was uh, on our list is M565. So that's down here. This is the section corner. Common to seven, seven, eight, seventeen, and eighteen. So it's the section corner here. Um, and I found a five its H rebar there. So let's go ahead and get that note in for M five six five. So we found a, a half inch rebar had no cap or tag. The monument was shown as a half inch diameter iron pin in a wood post with an unreadable tag on this subdivision map. I accepted the, this monument as marking the section corner, common section seven, eight, 17, and 18. And then I'm just gonna put, uh, I should add in here, um, I found no evidence of a wood post or tag at the time of my survey, my field survey. So I didn't find a post or a tag but it was probably there at some point. Okay, and I do think that's the section corner and it fit well with the other monuments we found. So again, same thing. I'm not even attempting to tie that back to the GLO. Um, this, this, this is good farmland that was surveyed, you know, a long, long time ago. And there's no direct tie in the record, but everybody that surveyed in the area has held this monument as a section corner. And I'm not gonna bump that apple cart. All right. Uh, the next monument we found was M570. Okay, so M570 is, I'm trying to think of what's left on here. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so down on the canal. So there were some monuments set on this side of the canal. I looked for every one of those monuments and I only found one. <laughs> I think the rest of these, this is all getting farmed for row crops and I think they've been, they've been dissed out or plowed out um, over the, you know, they've been in for probably a hundred years. Uh, they, they're on a really old map, but I did manage to find one here. And I think the reason why is there's an east-west property line that comes in here. And so these two farmers were, were concerned about where this monument was and I think that's why it stayed. So we did find that. So uh, we found a one inch iron pipe, no cap or tag, and it's next to an eight inch diameter metal post filled with concrete. That's how I know the farmers didn't want to get knocked out. They put a big post next to it. And uh, what what's the record? It's shown as a one inch diameter pipe on that record of survey, old record of survey. I accepted that monument as marking the property corner shown on the, on the record of survey. So found it, held it. All right, now there's one more monument that I actually forgot to write the note for. Uh, which is kind of a little bit funny, but it's this monument here. This is M10001. Okay, and it, it's actually a centerline monument um, that was on this same map. 
as these others when it's the same tag. So we're going to put this, paste this note in here. Okay, so we found the same thing. Uh, let's see. But I like to put, if it's a, a centerline mon like that, a key centerline mon, I like to put the intersection that I found it on. So let's go find them. Oh, I don't have it open. So let's go take a look. Okay, so it's this monument right here at Via del Pitorudo and Jensen. I'm probably butchering that Spanish name. I apologize. All right, so I found it's just one pipe, not plural. So in a monument, well, and then I'm going to say this monument is shown as a three-quarter inch diameter iron pipe tagged blah, 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 blah on that same map. And I said I accepted this monument as marking the street right away center line. And I'm going to put center line intersection of Jensen Road and Via del, sorry, Via del Petorudo, Petorudo, <clears throat> that's it, Via del Petorudo. Um, as shown on that map. Okay, so I accepted it as the corner. And that's it, that's what we found on the survey. So there wasn't a whole lot out here, it was an old part of town. Um, um, it was right on the edge of town, and, and so it was old and there just weren't a lot of monuments, but we did, we did good, I'm surprised we found what we found, and everything fit together really good except for this one monument over here that I don't, I don't think was the right monument, it wasn't the monument I was looking for, so. All right, that'll give you guys an idea how we write monument notes, an example. So what we'll do in the next video is I'll come in and we'll write these property corner notes. Uh, so we've got some monuments that we look for that we didn't find. We also have some monuments um, or some corners that were never monumented, and so we just need to talk about that a little bit. And uh, so we'll do that in our next video. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.